We're here for you 24-7. We're Real Country, 105.5 KD Country. Live from Alta Vista High School, it's time for Lady Colonels basketball. The Lady Colonels on 105.5 KD Country. Gosh, the music kind of gets you pumped up, doesn't it, Oscar? Boy. I love that familiar tune. Yeah, when you hear that, you start thinking hoops right away. Great stuff here. It's the Conference 44 title game. Lady Colonels taking on and playing host to the visiting Riverheads Lady Gladiators. Got a chance to catch up with Deborah Spencer a mere moments ago. It's funny, OB, you know, sometimes we do those coaches' interviews a day in advance or, or hours in advance. This time it really was like just moments ago, and Coach Spencer had some good things to say about last night. Big second quarter from the Lady Colonels last Absolutely. night. Absolutely. Uh, of course, went in last night 73-36 behind a uh, big first half uh, by uh, Haley Kraft with 19 and a half. So uh, Colonels started off a little slow. Into the first quarter, it was tied at 15 all, but after that they put on the gas and exploded big time really did great stuff last night let's hear about that from coach spence subway pregame show returns to alta vista high school again it's the lady colonels back in action conference 44 title game that means we're talking with head coach deborah spencer and coach spencer let's talk a little bit about last night looked like you guys might have been a tad rusty in the first quarter but boy the second quarter 31 points you really put your foot on the gas and it's pretty much over after that second quarter uh, it, it was. We did not get off to uh, a great start early, a little slow start. Started picking it up late in the first quarter, and I think um, hit a three that tied it maybe at 15. And at that point, 31 to four, second quarter. And, yes, that was pretty much the ball game right there. Does that rank up there with the most dominant quarters that you've had? I know you've had quite a few, especially on the good side. But uh, ah, 31 points in a quarter, there's some NBA teams that would like to have that. <laughs> We'd like to have that again tonight would be really nice. Uh, the first time we had a game this year that we scored 26 in one uh, quarter. So, But 31, that's a lot. Well, and the defense led up to a lot of those points. It was a lot of turnovers. Were you happy with the defensive effort, uh, not only in the second quarter, but the entire game? You know, Yes, I thought we could have been a little more aggressive early in the game, that there were some – steals and tips that we didn't get um, but in the second quarter I think we did we forced some turnovers and got some easy baskets and that seemed to trigger the offense. Paris Goggins was big in that second quarter and then the second half as well uh, talk about her inside presence and gosh she gobbled up the rebounds and really cleared off the glass nicely. She did she had a really good game had a season high 17 points uh, last night, she finished well in the paint, got to the free throw line and converted several times and did a good job defensively as well. Um, the other folks I have to ask you about, the Kraft sisters that we touched on, Haley with five threes, Taylor with three threes. I imagine there's a sibling rivalry there. Did Haley uh, nudge Taylor a little bit and say, hey, you know, I got five threes in that game, right? Uh, probably not. As competitive as they are, they're also each other's biggest fans. So you hear what, each of them encouraging the other in the game, and they really get excited for each other when they play. But um, in practice, yes, there's a little <laughs> bit of that uh, sibling rivalry going on. As to be expected. Let's move on to tonight. It's Conference 44 title game action against Riverheads. Uh, what do you know about the Lady Gladiators, and do you expect a tough test tonight? Uh, yes, I do. Um, they are, you know, well-disciplined team, well-coached team, fundamentally sound, uh, balanced. They have um, a good inside-outside play and multiple uh, perimeter um, three-point shooters as well. So they present a, uh, a, you know, a tough matchup for us tonight. Well, final thought for you here on the Subway pregame show, Coach Spencer. Um, with the fact that you guys are already in regionals, the regional seating is already set, uh, do you worry that the girls overlook this game, or do you still sense the same fire that they want to go out there and, and become the conference champs? You know, I, I don't think they overlook any game because I think for us, any time we get on the floor and we play, you want to win, regardless of if there's, you know, any tangible thing on the line. So we certainly – you can't overlook a team, 
uh, like Riverheads and the success that they've had in the past. So, no, I don't think that's, a, that's an issue for us. Great stuff, Coach. We'll let you run. Best of luck. It's the Lady Gladiators and the Lady Colonels set to tip in about five minutes on 105.5 KD Country. Quality, performance, value. When it comes to tires, no one is as obsessive as the designers and engineers at Michelin. We all expect tires to perform at their very best. So whether it's smooth riding Michelin cross-country terrain SUV tires, rugged Michelin LTX series of truck tires, or the premier passenger car performance of Michelin Hydro Edge tires, the name Michelin means you'll get the most out of your vehicle. When it's time to switch to Michelin, come to Perkins Twin Tire and Auto Service, Main Street, Alta Vista. Colonels, Colonels, hey, let's go Lady Colonels. Cheering on the Alta Vista Lady Colonels, one stop mark, Main Street, Alta Vista are proud of your dedication and teamwork. It's led you to the basketball playoffs. One Stop Mart Alta Vista is proud to support the community that supports One Stop. Before stepping out to tonight's game, be sure to fill up the gas tank at One Stop and pick up a bucket of the best chicken in town. One Stop Mart Main Street Alta Vista, where the gas is cheap, beverages are cold, and the chicken's kicking. Your high school sports station with award-winning coverage on 105.5 KD Country. Subway pregame show returns from Alta Vista High School. We're up in the press box tonight, Oscar. We decided to mix it up a little bit. Uh, down courtside last night. Courtside's always fun. I think we'll stay up here tomorrow night. But anyway, the folks at home don't really need to know that. They just want to know what's going on on the court. It's the Riverhead Lady Gladiators in town. Of course, there's some familiarity here. Riverhead's knocked out the Lady Colonels in volleyball action this year. They actually knocked out the Colonels in football action this year in the second round of the playoffs. This is a matchup that happens quite a bit in conference and regional play. And as we saw last night with the guys taking on Riverheads and we commented about it, Riverheads, a very common opponent. A lot of Colonel fans have heard this name over the years. Well, again, we, we talked about it last night. You're absolutely right. Long history between these two programs. And, uh, both of them have disrupted each other on various runs mm -hmm. to state titles in various sports. Uh, so, again, you know, a long-distance rivalry uh, probably best described it. But definitely a rivalry for sure. I think Oscar noted the Riverheads Gladiators starting lineup. Why don't you throw them out there, Mr. Briggs, as we wrap up the Subway pregame show. You've got number 10, Krista Earhart. She's a five-foot uh, sophomore, um, junior, junior, excuse me. Number 12, Emma Castro. She's a 5'10 junior. Number 20, Blake Bartley. She's a 5'7 junior. Macy Snyder is a 5'8 junior. And Cassidy Christman is a 5'10 senior. So starting four juniors and a senior here for Riverhead. So they've still got... Uh, they got work to do this year, but looks like they're loaded for next year as well. That's what we said about the Riverheads guys yesterday, too, wasn't it? Riverheads. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. They were young, young. They yeah. were freshmen, sophomore. Uh, they were loaded. About as young as a team you're going to see, uh, at least in basketball anyway. You know, in football and baseball and some of those other sports where you have to start 9, 10, 11 guys, maybe soccer, too. You have some more youth in there, but in basketball, you only start five guys, so it's kind of rare to see the youth that Riverheads had last night. Well, well certainly, certainly Coach was – I had a conversation with him after the game, and he's excited about his youth, and uh, he's dedicated to, you know, staying with them uh, and, and riding them as long as they can ride. Well, you remember what it was like when you were young. you got to stay patient with guys like that. Uh, I don't know. You were probably a pretty good scoring threat your your freshman and sophomore year, right? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm like Jordan. I got cut my freshman year, and okay. then when I got to Hargrave, I kind of got bumped up, played uh, postgraduate my sophomore year, and uh, we were actually talking to Coach Ty Gafford about one of your buddies, Max Wil Maxie oh, Wilkerson. Yeah. And yep. He and I played against each other. Sure rival. Like, like, uh, yeah, we were, and it was kind of like uh, – Matador defense. I yeah. think I hung 39 on him, and he <laughs> might have hung 35 or 36 on me. So De defense, that was every year. Defense was optional in those games. <laughs> right. Well, and much speaking, like it was last night, Lynchburg College and Roanoke College, and, 160 to 156. And speaking of being young, yes. today is a special day for you. Oh, uh, gosh. My understanding, it's your 29th birthday. It's not Jordan's birthday again. <laughs> no, that was yesterday. <laughs> Starters for the Lady Colonels, as we always seem to have a ball here. Number 44, Brittany Mason. Number 22, Taylor Kraft. Number 12, Addison Mormon. 
number 32, Victoria Burgess, and number 15, Whitney Davis. There are four seniors and one sophomore in that lineup, Mormon DeLone sophomore. Subway pregame show is done. The lights cycle through, and the referees take a little bit of time. They did do the light show, of course. You could see some of the Riverheads players telling the Alta Vista players, hey, that light show was pretty cool, and the Alta Vista girls just sort of shaking their heads. Yeah, it's... That's what we got going on here. It really is a great atmosphere if you've never seen a game. Pep Band is here as well, keeping it live and exciting, and it would appear that we're set to go now. They had to switch a couple of the lights back off. I think the strobe lights were still on. I think that's correct. It's Brittany Mason at jump circle, and if you notice, Oscar, Riverheads had everybody in the backcourt. They actually won the tip. They'll control it. Pardon me, that was the... Yeah, they were in the backcourt. They right. forgot which way they were going momentarily. There's almost a steal by the Lady Colonels. Burgess will pick it up on the pinball near sideline. Long pass finds Davis in the middle of the paint. She'll just step back, calmly try a jump shot. That won't go. Rebound is loose. Controlled for the moment by Cassidy Chrisman for Riverheads. She lost it. It's going to be out to Vista basketball with 7.37 left to play in the first quarter. I'm Kyle Haney. He's Oscar Briggs. Boy, last night the game got started a little bit slow, and um, looks like we're off to a little bit of a slow start. I mean, it's early. Burgess, bullet pass down low to Mason. Mason had to grab it between her legs, and she is tied up. They'll call that a jump ball. Mutual possession. Possession error will favor Riverheads. Alta Vista won the tip. That's why Riverheads gets the first jump ball on the possession error. Looks like zone defense to start out for the Lady Colonels. First time Riverheads has really touched the ball. They got some hands on it, but they never really possessed it. Lady Colonels with a double team in the corner on Blake Bartley. Davis knocks it out of bounds. Colonels continue. Last night were able to get into the passing lanes, and that's really what started the run against William Campbell. It was. You heard Coach Spencer mention that. She was pretty pleased with her defensive performance outside with maybe the first three or four minutes. She thought the gals looked a little bit rusty, but liked what they did after that. There's a nice pass inside to Bartley. Bartley can't finish. Contested shot. Lady Colonels were able to get back and recover. Mason tied up again. This time the possession arrow favoring the Lady Colonels with 7.04 left to play in the first. Still no score. Yeah, Mason's had her hands on two rebounds that she hadn't been able to, to keep away from Riverhead's defenders. Riverhead's doing a nice job crashing the boards and uh, getting into that jump ball situation. Mason pops to the free throw line to catch a Whitney Davis pass, then dribbles it back out, gives it right back to Davis. In the corner to Taylor Kraft. If you missed last night's game, Taylor Kraft with three three-pointers. Her sister Haley Kraft with five. Very good outside shooting threats for the Lady Colonels. There's a foul on Burgess as she was trying to dribble. It's on Blake Bartley, her first, team's first. And it's hard to hide these days. Uh, there's so much social media. There's so much game tape available. Um, Kraft will step inside and miss a long two. Davis with the stick back and rebound for two. So you know that uh, the Colonels are well scouted. They Riverheads knows that, that those Kraft girls can shoot. Yeah, I think you're right. I think back in the old days, if you couldn't get out of scout and scout a team, you just kind of rely on watching warm-ups to see who could shoot. Okay, her form looks pretty good. She made X amount in warm-ups. Let's watch her. But you're absolutely right. I think now social media, video, Everything's on the Internet as far as scores and stats and highlights, whether it's us, TV, newspaper. The information is a little more available. Lady Colonel's ball, they lead 2 to nothing. 5.55 left to play in the first. Kraft lost it on the baseline and was able to get it back. Dove on the floor after it. Nice hustle play. Here's Mormon with a 16-footer beyond the free throw line. Won't go down. Rebound controlled by Riverhead's Emma Castro in the middle of the paint. She'll clear. Lady Gladiators on the move into the front court quickly. Shot won't go in. There's an offensive rebound by Chrisman. Chrisman had to punch it back out to Bartley. Bartley for two. That won't go. Cassidy Chrisman's got another offensive rebound for Riverhead. She, she does a nice job down on the box. 5'10", so the size doesn't hurt, but she is active down there. Still in the zone defense for Alta Vista as Riverhead's in the road red jerseys. Black and white stripe down the side of the pants in the jersey. Attacking the basket to Oscar and I's left. Boy, Earhart's hard to find. She's a she's quick, and she's only five feet tall, and she moves really well. Riverheads tried to bounce past. Got kicked out of bounds off of Alta Vista. Riverheads will inbound. Here comes the aforementioned Haley Kraft. Such a big night last night. 
big time stuff in that second quarter that really pushed the Lady Colonels on to victory. She's replacing Whitney Davis on the floor. Colonel still in that zone. Earhart will dribble it out between the circles. Middle of the floor. Looks right now. Passes left to Macy Snyder. Snyder NBA range triple won't go. Looked good for a moment. Earhart got an offensive rebound. Finally, the Lady Colonels will poke it away and get a steal and clear that possession. Riverhead's held on to the ball for about five minutes. Good job by the Lady Colonels to not give up any points. They still lead 2-0. Victoria Burgess is not blessed with a ton of speed, but, buddy, she's savvy, great anticipation. She's really disruptive in that passing lane. Been around for a while, too. As we mentioned, a three-year starter. Three ball on the way from Kraft. That's off the side of the iron. That was Haley Kraft. Riverheads will clear on the glass. Riverheads is doing a nice job on the rebounding right now. Earhart dribbled it over her head. That's a travel. Back to Burgess for a moment. She did injure her knee about three weeks ago, I think, um, and missed a game, had some time. She's wearing a brace on it. She seems to think it's back to 100%, but I think you're right. When you're not already that fast, any kind of an injury is going to affect you a little bit more. Well, and, and we know I, I happen to work with her father, and um, all indications are a nice pass. Wow. Goggins unable to finish. Uh, but at any rate, I do work with her father, and, and they seem to think, the orthopedists seem to think that her knee actually popped out of socket. Hmm. Uh, and that uh, by the time Angela Emerson got over to her, that it actually got popped back in. So, Interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm familiar with that injury. It's uh, it, can, it, can, it can be longer term. Yeah. Uh, it's great that she only missed one game. It's the only reason Maxie Wilkerson got the best of you probably, huh? <laughs> Goggins, first free throw in and out will not go down. While we were talking, Burgess made a nice bullet pass down to Goggins on the left-hand post. Paris Goggins couldn't finish, but he did, she did get her own rebound and then was fouled. It's a 2 nothing Lady Colonel lead with four minutes even left to play. Goggins does sink the second. So it's a 3-0 advantage for Alta Vista. You're listening to Lady Colonel's Basketball on 105.5 KD Country. I'm Kyle. He's Oscar. Our sound engineer is Eleanor Haney. We're so glad to have... Some country music fans along for the ride, along with the basketball fans. Here's Earhart, 16-footer from just inside the three-point line. Won't go. Offensive rebound back up and in by number 12, Emma Castro. Riverhead's first bolt points of the ball game. They trail by one, 3-2 to two, Alta Vista. Kraft steps into a three. That one's good. Taylor Kraft from just in front of the pep band. You could see a bunch of members of the band rise to their feet. They knew that one was online and going down. Well, the group... Colonels did a good job of penetrating that zone, kicking the ball and rotating it over. Three ball on the way from Riverheads. No good. Long rebound still loose. Saved inbounds by Cassidy Christman. She's always around those rebounds. Colonels got out hustled on that when she saved it back in. Lady Colonels D out of position for a moment. Macy Snyder driving. That won't go. Got her own rebound. Rebound is still loose. Now on the floor. Earhart has it. Scrappy Riverheads team. They get those extra possessions. It's rare to see the Lady Colonels get out hustled too. Goggins playing some defense nicely on Castro and caused her to walk. She was just a brick wall there, and Castro couldn't get around, dragged but the foot. She, she did a great job keeping her, keeping her hands up and really moving her feet, wanting leaning, held her position. Great job defensively enforcing that turnover. Did that several times last night. Burgess will walk it into the front court. She's about as true of a point guard as you will find in high school basketball nowadays. Haley Kraft will step into a triple. That went off the side of the iron and took an odd deflection out of bounds. Nobody could grab that one. Riverheads with some substitutes in the ball game. It's number one, Sarah Moore, and number 30, Morgan Bond. First substitutes of the game for Riverheads. Alta Vista has subbed in Paris Goggins and Haley Kraft. They're on the court right now, joined by Addison Mormon, Victoria Burgess, and Taylor Kraft. They slip it inside to Bond on the left-hand post. She can't get it to go, but is tripped and will go to the free throw line and shoot a pair. They're doing a Riverhead is doing a nice job attacking his Colonel's 1-2-2 two, two zone. They're getting the ball out on the wing, and they're able to rotate a player across the baseline and get down on the uh, bottom of the uh, right next to the backboard. Doing a nice job getting position. Seems like the Lady Colonels have extended out a few times, Oscar, and that has left that baseline area around the backboard open. More substitutes in the game now for Alta Vista. It's Erica Mabry, her first action. Brittany Mason back in the game. We discussed yesterday, Mabry not 100%. She's nursing a ankle injury. Still got the brace on it, although it would seem she's in better shape than yesterday. Free throw, good. Riverheads cuts into the lead. It's a 6-4 Alta Vista advantage. 
First quarter brought to you by the KD Country Radio Auction, February 27th at 9 a.m. Your chance to bid and buy on many great items. Bird just left-hand lay-in try, would not go, trying to get the loose ball back. Little help from Brittany Mason. They'll call a jump ball tie-up again. Shared possession, and this time the possession arrow favors the Riverheads Gladiators. That's the fourth alternating possession we've had here in the first quarter with 2.02 remaining. Colonels leading 6-4. Should have done over-under on that. See how many we'll have in a quarter in the game, perhaps. Cross-court pass goes to Earhart. She dribbles to her right momentarily, retreats back out to the far sideline. Riverhead scoring on the left-hand bucket. Nice set shot by Morgan Bond. Won't go. High rebound is loose. Kraft dives on the floor after it. That's Haley Kraft. And now five mutual possession tie-ups. As this time, the possession arrow goes to the Alta Vista Colonels. It, did we have that discussion about back in the day they used to actually do a jump ball? Can you imagine how slow those games were? We had that off air, and yeah. um, you're right. And, and you talk about a jump ball situation, and, you know, now other than the beginning of the game, kids just think it's such a foreign concept that you would actually stop the flow of the game and, right. and actually hold a jump ball. Flow of the game stopped by Erica Mabry. She took too many steps and traveled. Yeah, believe the NCAA did away with it in 1981. I know the NBA was doing it in certain situations well into the 90s. It, it was like the last two minutes of a half or something like that. You would actually go to the jump ball. Then they canned it all together. Air ball there on a nicely contested shot. Erica Mabry has the rebound. And Lady Colonels want to go in a hurry. Kraft steps up to the right wing. Haley Kraft fires for three. Nearly got her own rebound, but Mabry was there and said, Taylor Kraft's going to try the long bomb. That won't go. Rebounded by Sarah Moore on the right-hand post. She's stuck along the baseline. Good pressure from the Lady Colonels, but Riverheads breaks it. Under one minute to play in the first. Lady Colonels got back on defense nicely there in the home white jerseys with the black and orange trim. Almost stole the ball in the backcourt, and then, like you said, did a great job in transition defense, preventing Riverheads, who looked like they were going to have numbers from scoring. Bartley drives. She's triple teamed and has to get rid of it. This is Earhart. Earhart with a nice find inside to Emma Castro who was really waiting patiently right in front of the cup. Drops it in for two. Tie ball game, 6-6. Six, six. First tie of the game unless you count 0-0. Zero, zero. Erica Mabry, long two is good. Nothing but nylon from the left baseline. That gets the fans into it a bit with 23 seconds left. Lady Colonels lead again, 8-6. Albeit small, if the Colonels are able to take that lead into the second quarter, that's emotionally big and a bit of a boost. It is an emotional game. Down to 10 seconds. Riverheads basketball. Bartley passes back to center to Earhart. Right wing now to Moore. Back to Earhart. She'll step into a three ball. It's good. Riverheads is going to lead as the buzzer will sound to end the first quarter. Good eight minutes of basketball. Riverheads nine, Alta Vista eight. Come back and join us for the second quarter on 105.5 KD Country. English Construction Company has been in the building business since 1909, so it's only natural that they appreciate the building process. They recognize the fact that organized sports programs build character as well as bodies and minds. They know that high school sports build our youth into more well-rounded and more productive adults. English Construction Company is proud to be a sponsor of high school sports and salute all athletes, coaches, and teachers. A word of praise and encouragement from English Construction Company with offices in Lynchburg. Now back to the action with Colonel Sports on 105.5 KD Country. Three-pointer at the end of the first quarter by Riverheads gives them the lead back 9-8. to eight. Actually, it's their first lead of the game, Oscar. They tied it at 6-6. Six, six. Lady Colonels went up 8-6. Riverheads with the three-pointer. First lead of the ball game, albeit a slim one. And Earhart was at the top of the key and just launched that one. Looked like she put everything she had into it, but it... <laughs> You don't draw a picture. It touched nothing but net. That's right. She did step into it, though. And, uh, you know, we discussed that yesterday, too. Girls' shooting form is generally a little bit different. Guys like to get both feet planted and jump with both feet and fire a jump shot. A lot of times, girls like to step into it with that right foot. But there's a lot of ladies that can shoot either way. That time, the five-footer won't go in and out by Blake Bartley. in the basketball out of bounds. They're going to say last touch off Lady Colonels. It's Riverhead's ball with 7.50 left to play in the half. Mason and Mabry were right there and uh, went up for the ball. And Riverhead's uh, tried to penetrate, but it was off on the Colonels. Another shot by Earhart. Off the rim, Mabry's going to save it inbounds. That's knocked out of bounds off Brittany Mason. So Riverhead's will keep it. Riverhead's is scrappy, though. They get extra chances any way they can. Offensive rebounds, loose balls. 
And Colonel's dodged a bullet there because Mabry had saved that ball under a, the opponent's team's basket, and they had a mismatch. Kind of lucky that they didn't score. Wow, nice lob pass inside. That was Blake Bartley dropping it over top of the defense into Morgan Bond's hands on the low post. She deposits the lay-in for two. 11 to 8 now, Riverhead's up three. Nice job by Bonds sealing the Altavista defender on her hip, too. Really was. Crafty post play there. Don't see that kind of stuff a whole lot in the high school game anymore either. Burgess picks up the dribble and then throws it to the right point to Kraft. Now it's left wing to Mabry. She fires the three, and that's good. Erica Mabry, the ankle clearly feeling better. She's drained a long two, and now she's drained a three. We're tied 11-11. All snake eyes. You can tell Erica's still not full speed. That's going to be a foul on Brittany Mason. Good enough to shoot, though, at least for Mabry. Oh, that Maybe is. giving up a little bit on defense. That is Mason's first. Second one on Alta Vista as a team. Long inbound pass is completed to Blake Bartley. Bartley will dribble a few times. Now throw a two-handed pass to Sarah Moore. Moore inside to Earhart. Earhart got tied up with Brittany Mason. <laughs> The possession arrow will favor the Alta Vista Lady Colonels at six now. Going to try and keep track. Six jump No, off. I've got it. It's right oh, here. He's keeping six. track. Um, Earhart came up on the short end of that, no pun intended, as she was tied up with Brittany Mason, and Brittany Mason just kind of pivoted, and Earhart went flying. Brittany Mason, a 5'9 senior. Earhart, a 5'0 junior. Burgess will try the three. That's off the back plate. No good. High rebound controlled in the middle of the paint by Emma Castro. This ball is loose now. Swatted out of bounds. Nice. Off of Riverheads. This ball's going to stay with the Colonels. Colonels are really, even though Riverheads is probably is, is out rebounding them right now, Colonels are doing a good job when Riverheads brings the ball down, uh, scrapping and getting their hands on it. Yeah, jamming that rebounder. Not just retreating. What a pass. Defense. Good look by Burgess to Goggins. Paris Goggins finishes nicely from the right side. But the 20-foot bullet pass from Burgess really set it up nicely. Goggins did a nice job finding that center slot on that zone defense. Go to the open space. Moore's going to try and work around Goggins. Now dumps it off to a streaking Castro who gets that to go with a right-hand finish. Riverhead's clearly well-schooled head coach Tim Morris. We're tied at 13, Briggs. That was nice penetration and then a great feed. That was not a great feed. The time the ball slips out of Burgess's hands a little bit. Too high for Paris Goggins, and it's out of bounds. Riverhead's ball with 5.55 left to play in the second quarter. Second quarter. Brought to you by the KD Country Radio Auction. Make oh sure you boy. tune in 9 a.m. February 27th. We could have some basketball again that day, Oscar, but we'll worry about that when it happens. So many great deals to be had. You Harley can, Davidson, New London Trailers. You Go can ahead. have great deals and basketball on the yes, same day. There's no it's law against It's that. a beautiful day. It's like Christmas in late February. That's what we think at KD Country anyway. Here's Riverheads in the front court to the free throw line. It's Castro, stuck, double team, now finds Chrisman, Chrisman up for two. Oh, it hung up on the rim but would not fall. She's headed to the free throw line to shoot two. We're all tied at 13. They're going to call that on Goggins. Similar situation to what she was in before, uh, only this time she didn't get her feet moved quickly enough and, and did create the foul. Chrisman will go to the line and shoot two. Paris Goggins has two personal fouls. The Lady Colonels have three as a team. Riverheads has two. We have 537 left to play. In the second quarter, glad you're tuned in on your ride home. If you're a basketball fan or a country music fan, just glad you're a fan. 14-13. Second free throw goes down. Riverheads leads by one, but not for long. Long pass by Burgess again to Paris Goggins for two. Goggins again just all alone in front of that rim, Oscar. Doing a great job finding the hole. They keep it. Victoria Burgess dribbles with her heads up with her head up, and that's key to getting those passes and hitting those players streaking down court. Ten-footer, middle of the lane, won't go. There's Taylor Kraft with a rebound on the right edge of the paint. She'll bring it up the far sideline. That's the left sideline for the Lady Colonels. Back to center to Burgess. Burgess driving at it, wiped off her hands as she was about to put it up for the lay-in. Here's Castro. She'll stop at the right free throw line extended. Now Paris Goggins with a steal and another jump ball as Oscar gets the pin out. Hope you have some ink left in that thing. This is time the possession arrow will give it to Riverheads. Seventh alternating possession ball. I just feel so bad because we can't go into describing how it works every time, but I think if you're sometimes if you're listening at home, it doesn't make a lot of sense. K 
Castro tried to bounce pass in between a lot of legs. Maybe could have called a kickball on the Lady Colonels. But instead, we'll call it a jump ball. Call another jump ball. <laughs> it's a time when the basketball is possessed by both teams at the same time. The referees will generally let you wrestle for it for about a second or two, Oscar Briggs, and they blow the whistle to stop play. Haley Kraft going to trigger the three, and that time it's good. Toes on the line from the right wing, and Coach Tim Morris has seen enough for the moment. He wants a timeout. Lady Colonels lead by four, 18-14. Timeout with 4.38 left to play in the second quarter on 105.5 KD Country. Serving families since 1905. Life is full of opportunities to show someone we love them. One such opportunity is the funeral or memorial service. Finch and Finch helps you celebrate the relationships they shared and honors the memory of your loved one. Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service. A family serving families since 1905. Your home for Colonel Sports Coverage. 105.5 KD Country. Kyle Victoria Burgess is going to get the assist on that play, but you probably should give one to Paris Goggins as well. She sealed the Riverheads defender and allowed Kraft to be wide open. Nearly got a steal there. She got a right hand on it, poked it out of bounds. Yeah, Paris Goggins does a lot of things that may not show up on the stat sheet. A lot of them do show up on the stat sheet, but she's a, a very good player and perhaps a bit underrated by us. Well, maybe not anymore anyway, perhaps coming into last night. Three-pointer on the way from Riverheads. Front the iron, no good. A whistle got blown. There was no foul on the play, though. It was an inadvertent whistle. Everybody stopped playing. The referees are going to talk about it. It was number 24, Macy Snyder, that put the three-pointer up. There was nobody around her. He didn't mean to blow the whistle. No, he threw his foul. hand up, signifying that if it goes, it's a three. Sure. And, uh, he blew the whistle. She, it may it, be another jump ball she, situation, she honestly. She did a little bunny hop when she uh, when she threw the ball up. I thought he was going to call a walk. Yeah. Referee's talking about it. Tim Morris, just judging by the body language, is not particularly happy with the decision. Uh, but, it, again, it's an inadvertent whistle is all it is. It happens a lot. It happens in football quite a bit. It happens in basketball. I think it might just revert back to a jump ball. Can you put another mark and maybe a parentheses around no, it or something no, like no. that to note it? It's Riverheads no. basketball. Everybody stopped playing, though. I mean, all ten players but just the stopped got tracks when they got, heard the whistle. Jim got deadly quiet. Excuse me. And the one official was a bit embarrassed about it, and maybe rightfully so, but he's human. I mean, it's not – he didn't go out of his way to make anybody look bad or make a mistake. Again, just an inadvertent whistle. Riverheads ball in the front court. Bradley lost it momentarily. Pardon me, that was Bond. Somehow it finds the hands of Chrisman, and she dumps it in for two. 18-16, Lady Colonel's lead trimmed to two. Burgess got at least five assists already, doesn't she? Taylor Kraft going to fire for another one. That's too strong. Sister Haley Kraft ran it down on the near sideline. Ball out of bounds, last touch off of Kraft, so it's going to go to Riverheads. They're working right to left from our perspective. Erica Mabry back in the ball game for Addison Mormon for the Lady Colonel's. Well, Haley... Uh, back to earth after the performance from last night. Only with three. Looks, she the looks night a, is young. Yeah, she looks a little out of sorts so far. Hadn't really been in the flow. Uh, not shooting extremely well. Lady Colonels kind of playing that amoeba zone defense where everybody just goes to the ball. They find Crispin on the right-hand block. She scores. We're tied at 18. Another score. I think we might see a timeout from head coach Deborah Spencer. Haley Kraft wants to try again for three. What do I know? And knocks that one down. Guess that, who passed it to her? Bur Burgess again on the assist. Yeah, and she was in. Uh, that was in rhythm. Mm -hmm. Nice step into the into the shot. She looked good on that release. Well set up. Good stroke. Lady Colonel scrambling after this ball. Riverhead somehow managed to maintain possession of it. Lady Colonel's on top, 21-18. Bartley fires up a contested five-footer. Well, that won't go, and then there's a walking violation on Emma Castro. She slid the foot and sort of shuffled sideways and threw her body into a couple Colonel defenders. I bet if you ask Coach Spencer after this uh, that if they've seen a better interior passing team than Riverheads this year, I would be willing to bet the answer is no. Yeah, Riverheads is crafty in there, aren't they? I mean, they like to pass from post to post, high post to low post, and then each of the low posts back and forth, and then 
Somehow they find people in the middle of the paint, though, too. I mean, the, that painted area is not that wide, but you're right. Somehow they slipping in and out with great regularity. Erica Mabry going to trigger the three ball. That's too strong. Foul on Brittany Mason as she was going after the rebound. It's her second. I think she almost had possession, but she brought she dropped her arms on top of the Riverheads player. They're going to call that every time. Lady Colonels will retreat back in what looks like a 2-3 defense. I wonder if we'll see the full court pressure at some point, Oscar. Uh, if the game remains close, I'd be willing to bet Coach Spencer goes to it. 21-18, Lady Colonels on top by three. Riverheads could tie or get it within one. There's a nice bounce pass to Castro. She sticks it in. Just what we were talking about, Cassidy Christman is in the left painted area, just inside the paint. And she just makes just like a five-foot bounce pass to Castro, who was streaking down the right side of it. Impressive stuff and a good finish, too. Here's Mabry in the right corner. Throws it to the mid post to Brittany Mason. Mason shot attempt from five feet straight away, too strong. Rebound controlled by Emma Castro in the paint. And with 148 remaining, Mason needs to be careful. She's going to pick up. She, you don't want to pick up your third. No, you don't. We saw that last night with William Campbell. Here comes a three-pointer from Morgan Bond. Good, just left of center. The lead is back in Riverhead's hands. 23-21. They lead by two. Lady Colonel's going to try and change it. Taylor Kraft knocks it down. Back and forth basketball here. It's not a three-point competition, but it's shaping up that way. 24-23. Lady Colonel's back on top one. I don't think Riverhead's wants to get into a three-point shooting contest with the Colonels. Not with two Crafts on the court. And, I guarantee you that. And a, and a Mabry and mm -hmm. the way that they do the interior passing amongst their big people. They tried it again there. Cassidy Christman had it knocked out of her hands. Nice job by Mason. Just get that right hand on and swat it away. A little dangerous, though, with two fouls. And Coach Spencer, perhaps for that reason, going to give Brittany Mason a rest. Paris Goggins back in the ballgame. Yeah, when she picked up her second, Goggins was immediately brought off the bench. Riverheads inbound play. That's Castro. She went to the hole and got blocked by Paris Goggins. That might be the third one on Paris Goggins now on the foul. 102 left to play in the half. It is the third foul on number 34, Paris Goggins. Lady Colonels have five as a team. Taylor Lee waiting at the scorer's table. I feel certain she's coming in for Paris Goggins. On the court right now for the Lady Colonels. Lee, Haley Craft, Erica Mabry, Taylor Craft, and Victoria Burgess. Small lineup. Sure is. First free throw no good from Riverheads. Emma Castro. Second one won't go either. Lane violation is on Riverhead, so it wouldn't matter if it had gone. Pardon me, it was Morgan Bond on the free throws. Probably got some folks up there in Riverheads tuned in via the TuneIn app or kdcountry.com. If we, we do, spread the word up there. Yeah, thanks for joining us, and uh, we've got a good-looking team here. Absolutely. Glad to have you along for the party and the rivalry party. Nice pass by Burgess again to find Mabry waiting Patiently on the right-hand post, finishes with the left hand. Lady Colonels back up three, 26-23. Down to 35 seconds remaining. Burgess is going to have as many assists as she does in a volleyball match. No kidding. I mean, Lady Colonels have 26 points. I bet she's got six or seven assists. That'd be 12 or 14, and a couple of those were three-pointers, so it's probably she's assisting on about 15 or 16 points. There's an offensive foul on Riverheads. That was Morgan Bond trying to clear out some space, and the referee whistled her for it. Her first, third on Riverheads as a team. Colonels up 26-23, 24 seconds left. Clock a little bit late getting started. If they could hold for the last shot here and score, gosh, that would be big momentum going to the locker room. Haley Craft's going to try it and makes it for three. This time, a 23-footer from Haley Craft. She's getting hot again. Ten seconds left in the half. All it took was a little uh, announcer jinx talk. <laughs> the reverse oh, boy, jinx. That's right. She's lighting it up now. Five seconds. Bartley driving. Shot too strong. It's an air ball. There's Taylor Kraft on a nice rebound to they're clear gonna, it off. They're going to call a foul. They are. And it's not going to matter. It's not a shooting foul. We're going to head into the locker room. It will be the fourth foul on Riverheads in the half, though. But, again, those are reset. But it's another personal foul. And an interesting way to end the half. Lady Colonels probably liked how it ended. They lead 29-23. Subway halftime show on the way when you come back to 105.5 KD Country. PCM Industrial Services recognizes the importance of high school athletics by sponsoring this award-winning broadcast. 
PCM Industrial Maintenance and Construction Specialists providing welding, millwright, erection, and fabrication services to all forms of industry throughout the Mid-Atlantic region. From offices in Alta Vista, PCM Industrial Services congratulates the Alta Vista basketball teams on another successful season. Good luck in the playoffs. Go Colonels. A short drive will save you money. In the market for a new Chevrolet? Feller's Chevrolet. Fellersdirect.com. For a huge selection of new Chevrolets and pre-owned vehicles, it's Feller's Chevrolet. Fellersdirect.com. Fellersdirect.com. Selection. Selection. Convenience. Convenience. Feller's Chevrolet. Feller's Chevrolet. Always open and only a click away. Fellersdirect.com. A short drive will save you money. Feller's Chevrolet. Your station for high school sports play-by-play is 105.5 KD Country. Subway halftime show is here, and hello to the gang in the Main Street Subway. They said they were going to tune in to Lady Colonels basketball. They're having a great time down there. Oscar, I'm a little bit ashamed to tell you what I got at Subway. You ready for this? Yeah, I'm really. I'm not not, ashamed is not the right word. It wasn't nutritionally balanced, let's put it that way. In a bit of a rush to get up back over here for the game today. All I got was two raspberry cheesecake cookies and the unsweet tea. I don't think any nutritionist anywhere is going to call that a well-balanced meal. But those cookies are so good, I had to do it. Yeah, the cookies have uh, have flour. Uh, you got to have milk to make the cookies. Yeah. Uh, you got to have eggs. I love I love um, how you're spinning this. Uh, you, I, the, you've tried least, to make this argument before, haven't you? you they say that uh, that tea is good for you. Yeah. Um, spe- unsweet. Unsweet. I did, yeah. No sugar. Um, so that's sweet. right. So I think you're okay. I think I'm decent. And we'll send a big hello and a shout out to the gang at Fosters, Angie, Nicole, Callie, Whitney, Alyssa, and Dylan. Not sure which of that combination, probably two or three of them working tonight. Not sure which two, but hello, gang. If you're listening to the ball game, you guys are working hard up there. And I'm sure the folks in the Walmart location working hard, too. Lady Colonel's working hard in that first half, Oscar. They had to. It was a scrappy and ready Riverheads ball club. But Alta Vista really played nicely down the stretch in that second quarter. They lead 29-23 at half. They had Colonel's had eight field goals in that quarter. And didn't we think... Burgess assisted on six or seven well, of them? They, they had eight. Five of them were threes. <laughs> so 21-point quarter, wow. big for the Colonels. And, again, you, you shoot five three-pointers. You make five three-pointers and three two-pointers, uh, scoring 21 points in a girls' high school basketball game. In a boys' high school, you score 20 in each quarter. Mm-hmm. 21, you're going to uh, you're gonna beat more people than you're going to lose to. Sure. We talked about last night the Lady Colonels had a 31-point quarter. Second Coach Spencer, quarter. yeah, <laughs> Coach Spencer couldn't really remember – 31 points she said the gals did score 27 in a quarter earlier this year oscar and that's that's a pretty good output for an nba team i mean you think about it you average that you're averaging over 100 now obviously the lady colonels don't average that but i'm just saying no and and again you're talking about an eight minute quarter too that's hanging some points up yeah Um, i saw a stat this morning that that in games where teams outscore their opponents they're 100 100 percent win (laughs) win rate (laughs) Oh, man, I thought it was going to be a legit stat. You set it up so well. Hey. Stat of the night right there. They, they say it's your birthday, Kyle. Yeah. They say it's your birthday. We don't even need stat guy Bob for that stat. It's perfect, and you're right. It's 100% accurate. Teams that outscore their opponents win 100% of their ball games in which they do so. Uh, I suppose if you use an ineligible player or something, that's about the only way you could get burned. So maybe it's well, 90, then it reverts 99.9. To, it reverts to 2 to nothing for the forfeit, so. <laughs> Oh, gosh, let's get it together. It's the Subway Halftime Show. Why get it together? We're having fun. Hope you are, too. Lady Colonels lead 29-23. Quick timeout, and we're back with more on 105.5 KD Country. Recognized for outstanding service and customer satisfaction, Sunny Merriman Incorporated is Virginia's platinum service Thomas Built Bus Dealer. As Virginia's oldest and most experienced bus distributor, Sunny Merriman Incorporated has been providing buses to schools, churches, medical facilities, and transit agencies for 50 years. Sunny Merriman Incorporated recognized the Alta Vista boys and girls basketball teams for their outstanding season and wishes them good luck in the playoffs. Go Colonels! Jumpstart your business on a winning note with the Alta Vista Revolving Loan, an opportunity to score big for your company's future growth. Funds available up to $10,000, loan rate 1% below prime. Check in with Alta Vista's Economic Development Director, Dennis Jarvis, at Alta Vista Town Hall. 
The Alta Vista Revolving Loan Fund encourages economic development and enhances community vitality, supporting the Alta Vista Colonel's winning tradition. More live high school sports action on 105.5 KD Country. Lady Colonel's lead as the Subway Halftime Show continues. They're up 29-23, ready for some halftime scoring. Mr. Briggs, you touched on it for just a moment there as far as the eight field goals for the Lady Colonels. Sure, for Alta Vista. Whitney Davis got the game started off with her only bucket. Uh, that gave the Colonels a 2-0 lead. She's got two. Haley Kraft with nine. Taylor Kraft with six. Paris Goggins with five. Erica Mabry with seven. Boy, that's a balanced attack for those 29 points for the Colonels. For Riverheads, Krista Averhart with three, Castro with eight, Morgan Bond with seven, and Cassidy Christman with five. Most of those points coming in the interior with that very tight passing game amongst their big girls. So um, I think if you're Riverheads, you got to continue to attack that zone and continue to, to, to do that interior passing that they do so well and, and just hope continue to play that zone defense that they're playing and hope that the Colonels cool off. Well, and the Lady Colonels on defense, Oscar, as we've noted, but we'll note it again, they're very aggressive. And that's a pro and a con because they create a lot of turnovers, but they do leave some open spaces in that zone when you get so aggressive and you try and double team and triple team. And Riverheads with that inside passing really has been able to take advantage of that. Riverheads did sink a couple three-pointers. I believe it was Earhart and Bond scoring from beyond the three-point ring. Um, so they can shoot it outside a little bit as well, and that may come in handy down the stretch. They hit the three at the end of the quarter to go up 9-8, yeah. and then uh, you know midway through the second quarter, uh, they continued to go back and forth. And then the last three minutes, uh, the Kraft girls got hot, and it was lights out from that point. Yeah, I'm guessing sometimes when, when they get hot, Coach Spencer wishes halftime wouldn't roll around. I mean, let's let's keep them out there and keep shooting. She has kept the gals in the locker room for quite some time, though. We'll step aside for another timeout on the Subway Halftime Show. I'm Kyle Haney. He's Oscar Briggs. It's Alta Vista 29, Riverheads 23 in the Conference 44 title game. You're hearing it on 105.5 KD Country. Colonels, Colonels, hey, let's go Lady Colonels. Cheering on the Alta Vista Lady Colonels, One Stop Mart, Main Street Alta Vista are proud of your dedication and teamwork. It's led you to the basketball playoffs. One Stop Mart Alta Vista is proud to support the community that supports One Stop. Before stepping out to tonight's game, be sure to fill up the gas tank at One Stop and pick up a bucket of the best chicken in town. One Stop Mart, Main Street Alta Vista, where the gas is cheap, beverages are cold, and the chicken's kicking. Quality, performance, value, when it comes to tires, no one is as obsessive as the designers and engineers at Michelin. We all expect tires to perform at their very best. So whether it's smooth riding Michelin cross-country terrain SUV tires, rugged Michelin LTX series of truck tires, or the premier passenger car performance of Michelin Hydro Edge tires, the name Michelin means you'll get the most out of your vehicle. When it's time to switch to Michelin, come to Perkins Twin Tire and Auto Service, Main Street, Alta Vista. Back to the press box for high school sports on 105.5 KD Country. Subway halftime show wrapping up. Pep Band doing a nice job keeping it lively in the gymnasium tonight. They play music you can dance to. It's not, it's not sit-down orchestra stuff here. You can get up and shake your booty a little bit. Oscar, we got a second. You want to talk about the guys' game tomorrow? They host... Riverheads right here. Subway pregame show will be on around 545. Unfortunately, you won't be joining me, but uh, maybe you'll be tuned in as you head down the road. Yeah, they host Luray to, to, tomorrow night. What did I say? Riverheads. Okay. That's easy to do. I mean, it's very Riverheads easy to do. last night, Riverheads tonight. Yeah. And, uh, Luray played is Luray, our though. friends from Wimble Campbell, William Campbell last night, and uh, that game was a, was a track meet 99 to 73. So uh, Coach Harris was in with uh, his scout. Uh, Coach Jerry Rice after the game last night talking about, you know, what in the world have we got to do to stop these guys? Yeah, Coach Harris, I don't think he was worried, but uh, you could tell there was some concern on uh, his face with some of the stuff that Coach Rice was presenting. And Jerry Rice, former assistant coach here for a long time at Alta Vista, he was on the coaching staff for that 04 state championship, and he does still scout for the guys. Plays a lot of golf now. We Plays a lot golf. of golf. Yeah, does yeah. a lot of fishing. Oh, he do, yeah, he he loves fishing. He's pretty good, too. He gets in tournaments and that kind of thing. I really hope Jerry Rice is listening. He's uh, 
He's loving this right now. No, he's the last guy that uh, has any kind of an ego. Great guy. No, this is a different Jerry. Right? <laughs> Great guy. Good basketball uh, definitely, mind. Definitely a different Jerry. A very good umpire, too, although I think he's going to end his umpiring days. Wish he wouldn't. Loose ball has to get saved from going backcourt by Riverheads, and now they lose it. Whitney Davis going to dribble with her left hand, just hand it off to Taylor Kraft. She'll give it over on a short three-foot pass to Victoria Burgess. Burgess nearly lost it. Able to save the possession. On the court right now for the Lady Colonels, it's the starters. Mason, Mormon, Burgess, Davis, and Taylor Kraft. Brittany Mason just completely wrapped up. Kind of an arm bar takedown there from Riverheads, and Mason will trot over to the free throw line and shoot a pair. With 7.24 left to play in the third quarter. Brittany yet to score tonight. This it's is rare. her first trip to the line. You're always going to score and be a big winner on the KD Country Radio Auction, February 27th. That's next Saturday. Nice segue, huh, Oscar? Yes. Lots of great deals. Also, Brittany Mason knocks down her first free throw. That there helps. are some great it deals. too. And I don't even know what they are yet. Uh, yeah, but you know some of the regulars. Miller's Jewelry, Moe's Southwest Grill, Harley-Davidson, Point Source Audio. Tons and tons of fun and deals to be had. 31-23, Mason does score. She knocks down both free throws. Lady Colonels in zone defense again. It's been the half-court zone all night. They haven't done any man-to-man, no full-court press yet anyway. Good ball movement here from Riverheads. They rotated around the perimeter of that Lady Colonel D. Hadn't really got it inside the three-point line. When they tried, Mason was there to take it away for the Lady Colonels. Boy, she jumped that pass route. Taylor Kraft, left-hand dribble, bringing it to the left point. Now it's right wing to Whitney Davis. Davis going to roll off a Mason screen. They tried the pick-and-roll play. Riverheads defended it nicely. Back in Burgess's hands, two-hand overhead pass to Taylor Kraft. Jab step, fakes the pass, throws it free throw line to Mormon. Mormon looked lost for a moment. She gave it up, and it got knocked out of bounds. Into the front row, Lady Colonels will retain possession with 6.37 left to play in the third. It's a 31-23 Alta Vista advantage. Boy, if I'm a Colonels player, I love playing with Whitney Davis. She absolutely looks for the, which all these girls do, look for the pass first. Well, look at Mason, nice up and under move. Started right, cut back to the left on the right post. And was fouled. Yep. Draws some uh, friendly criticism. Well, I'm attention from Riverheads. Mason on the free throw line again. Head coach Tim Morris having a discussion with the referee. Different officials. Sometimes it can be tough in a postseason to adjust. Different units and different associations call different things. They enforce different things more stringently or loosely than others. Bob Alvis and I have had that discussion a while. He may be listening. He may not be listening. Mason, right-handed free throw shooter, sinks the next two. Colonels all of a sudden lead by 10, 33-23. I was down with Coach Morris and Coach Spencer before the game, and they were having a nice chat and was able to eavesdrop and talk to him a little bit. He's a nice guy. Uh, been, co- been coaching and in the coaching business for about 40 seasons, he said. so hmm. He doesn't look a day over 40. No. Must have started young. He was coaching a uh, he was coaching a kindergarten team when he was in first grade. Burgess cutting gets to just beyond the free throw line and passes it up to Taylor Kraft. Burgess gets it back again, one step inside the three point line. Now she'll retreat toward mid court, moving slowly to her left, switches over, moves to the right, looking for a little bit of help. Brittany Mason comes out to give it to her. There's a foul away from the basketball. That's against Riverheads. I believe they got number 24 Macy Snyder with a foul. Second one of the half on Riverheads. Not up on the board yet, waiting for something official. It was on Snyder. Her first personal, it's actually the third team foul. 5.50 left to play in the third quarter. I'm Kyle. He's Oscar. Sound engineer Eleanor Haney back at home base. Remind us to discuss her Subway dining options in the Subway postgame show. Colonels have really taken, kind of taken the air out of the ball. Not so much intentionally as just... They're being very methodical in running their offense, and they're being very selective in their shots. It's worked so far. Uh, Brittany Mason going back to the line again. This is her third trip to the line. She's four for four uh, with 532 remaining here in the third quarter. Colonel's up 33-23. It's the only way the Lady Colonels have scored this half. It's actually the only way anybody's scored this half is Brittany Mason free throw. She does back iron the first one, though. Thanks, Oscar, for the jinx. Well, you got the reverse jinx going on Haley Kraft. You got her going, her three-point stroke. So 
it evens out in the long run. Mason holds it high above her head and drains the second one. One for two, that trip. It's now an 11 point Alta Vista advantage. If your river hits Coach Morris, you, you really, really want to see the ball go in the hole now. They've gone almost three minutes with not, without scoring here in this quarter, and there's a turnover forced by Kraft and Victoria Burgess. Addison Mormon catches along the other free throw line and gets it into the front court. Her pass just too high. She was looking for Brittany Mason along the baseline. It'll be Riverhead's basketball. I'm with you on Tim Moore, so, I mean, you got a quality shot would be great. Getting it in the bucket would be even better. I don't think he wants a three-pointer right now. I believe he'd like his team to get inside in the key area again. Here's Earhart driving around Whitney Davis, but then stop. Now over left wing inside to Bartley. She's inside the three-point line. She'll back it out. Oh, nice steal by Brittany Mason. She could not hold on to it, though. I think if you're Coach Morris, you're happy if you get a shot off. <laughs> At this I point, mean, you may be right. They haven't, to, to my recollection, they, have, they don't have a shot off this quarter. That's been one constant here at Alta Vista, where there was Mike Cartolero, Troy Harris, Deborah Spencer. The defense is always pretty smothering. It's like putting a winter coat on and then going into a sauna and just sitting there for a while. It's just really stifling. It's like a boa constrictor. I mean, it's just, and we know that with all those coaches that you've mentioned, if you don't play defense, you yep. don't play. Yeah, you're I mean, exactly that's right. That's just the way it is. More defense from the Lady Colonels right on cue. Brittany Mason steps in front of an errant pass. They're going the other way. They're in the front court. Alta Vista scoring on the left-hand bucket this half. Oh, nice lob pass from Taylor Kraft to Mason. She can't get it to go. She rebounded just outside the lane by Riverheads. Addison Mormon nearly got her hands on Boy, the steal. Brittany Mason swiped. And Coach Morris is letting the officiating crew know about it. Harris Goggins back in the game. So is Haley Kraft. They join Taylor Kraft, Addison Mormon, and Victoria Burgess. 14 fouls on Riverheads. None on the Colonels in this quarter. It's a 2-3 zone for Alta Vista, but it does not maintain its shape very long, Oscar. I mean, it, it is. It, no. I used the amoeba term earlier. I think that's accurate because they pretty much go everywhere. Haley Kraft nearly got a pickpocket steal. They roll after it on the floor, her and Krista Ever Earhart, pardon me. Tim Morris visibly upset again. He didn't like that call. The basketball is out of bounds at last he's, touch off Riverhead. He's bookended by officials. He let one have it, and he was getting ready to team up. He turned and let the other one have it. Pretty smart coaching there. No, that's, that's, that's pretty right. crafty. You lose eye contact and turn away from them. That's a, that's a ploy used by a lot of coaches. Paris Goggins steps out to the left wing three-point line to catch a pass. Here, Spins around the, looking for help. Go ahead. If I'm Coach Morris... Excuse me for stepping on you. Uh, but if I'm Coach Morris, okay, the officials here are going let to the, let these girls play some. Let your, you know, your kids have to adapt and be just as physical. I mean, yeah, you're, trailing by, point. you're trailing by 11 right now. I mean, you hit the nail on the head, Oscar. I mean, you can, it's kind of like an umpire strike zone. You can have one at bat to complain about the strike zone, but after that, you know what he's doing. You know what he's calling. Just adjust to it. And that's easier said than done. Lady Colonels basketball. If you look up at the foul total, though, you got to see why Tim Morris is maybe a little bit upset. Zero fouls on the Lady Colonels this half, five on Riverheads this half. We're just over halfway through the third quarter. Burgess driving, slides by the defense, and she is fouled. And at this point, Tim Morris is incredulous, but that one that clearly a foul. I mean, the referee's got that one right. Burgess was hacked going up for it. Doesn't look like they're going to say she was in the act of shooting. Okay, yeah, she was. That's that's the right call. Victoria Burgess going to step to the line and shoot two. That's the third foul on Emma Castro. Carl's without a field goal this quarter, too. First one knocked down by Burgess. Yeah, you can't uh, you can't underestimate Riverhead's defense. It's been pretty good, too. It's just they can't score and cut into this deficit for the Lady Colonels at all. Alta Vista leads by 15, 12 now, pardon me. 13 after Burgess knocks down both. Again, a disclaimer, math never my strong suit. Should let Oscar handle that. That's right. Colonels 8 for 10 from the free throw line in this quarter. That's blistering. It's very good stuff there. Nearly got another steal. Blake Bartley catches it. Ooh, she strides and to the more. bucket nicely in one. There's the first points for Riverheads this half. It comes from a quick move by Blake Bartley. She had to sort of save a bad pass. She caught it in stride, 
two or three dribbles to the right edge of the hoop and scored it. Lowered her shoulder and got that step and was not to be denied. A quick move. Kind of caught me off guard. Free throw in and out will not go down. Paris Goggins with the rebound just outside the lane for Alta Vista. Taylor Craft brings it up left of center. Two hands it over to Victoria Burgess. Burgess, a bullet pass to the right wing, finds Haley Craft. Goggins rolls off a screen, catches the pass, can't get the shot to go. They're, they're in a man-to-man now, <laughs> so they're out of that zone. Riverhead's in a hurry. Earhart got knocked to the deck. The foul comes out. Let's see who it's on for the Lady Colonels. Victoria Burgess with a hip check. It's hockey season. It's hockey season. You know I'm a big hockey fan, too. I really want to get call some hockey on the radio. I know this is purely personal. That's a no-no in broadcasting to talk about yourself a lot, but I'd like to get out there and do some hockey broadcasting. You think I'd be good at it? Three on the way for Morgan Bond is good. As we have the chit-chat and the banter, Riverhead's all of a sudden making a run. 5-0. In the last minute here, there's 2.45 left to play in the third quarter. So 36-28 Alta Vista lead. Got it back to within single digits, and that's always a key going into the fourth quarter. Of course, there's still a lot of time left, 2.20 remaining in this quarter. Kraft fakes the three, bounces inside to Paris Goggins. She had to wrestle it away from Riverhead's Blake Bartley. That's another jump ball tie-up. Oscar's keeping the running total. We're up to 10 now on the possession arrow changes. This change in defense is uh, kind of disrupted the Colonels. I don't know if they hadn't recognized it yet or um, just haven't adapted and haven't been able to get into their offense with it. But it certainly fueled this little 5-0 run that, that Riverheads is on. See what Alta Vista can do here to respond. They could use some points. They have not scored a field goal this third quarter. Mabry, left post, turns, runs into some resistance, lost the basketball. Trying to get it back. It's flung out of bounds. Nearly hit athletic director Dean Hubbard in the face as he was texting on his phone. He quickly puts the phone up and says, boy, I better pay attention here. It's dangerous we down saw there. It, we did see it. He's got a smile on his face. <laughs> Alta Vista ball inbounding on the baseline underneath their own scoring hoop. Mason, oh, pardon me, Paris Goggins turned around to go and score and lost the ball. They're doing 15 a, left to play, Riverheads. They're doing a great job collapsing and double teaming. Every time the ball goes into the post, they're really collapsing. They're getting weak side help. Riverheads doing a very nice job defensively. Here's Morgan Bond. She lost it. Good takeaway from Alta Vista. Haley Kraft's going to sprint into the front court with it. She lost it. Sloppy play now. Blake Bartley on the run out to the right edge, off the window, and down for two. If I'm Coach Spencer, I want a timeout right now. 36 to 30. She doesn't look like she's going to call it yet, but she is going to send Brittany Mason and Addison Mormon back into the ball game. Burgess angles left. One hand bounce pass to Haley Kraft. Kraft no dribble. Now it's a waist high right hand. Bounces top of the key to Mabry. Mabry catch and shoot three. Look at Coach Spencer excited on the sideline. That's, that's a streak buster right there. They reeled off seven in a row. So that was a big bucket for the Colonels. Great stuff. Good ball movement. Kraft saw. Mabry popped to the top of the key, and Erica Mabry with the quick trigger for three. It's a nine-point advantage for Alta Vista. Riverheads down on the low post. Cassidy Chrisman lost it. Out of bounds. It's off of Alta Vista. Now the substitutes will get a chance to come in for the home team. On the court for the Colonels, Addison Mormon, Brittany Mason, Erica Mabry, Victoria Burgess, and Taylor Kraft. For Riverheads, it's Sarah Moore inbounding. She throws it into Blake Bartley. They're joined by Morgan Bond, Cassidy Chrisman, and Krista Earhart. Oh, good cut there by Bartley to sneak through. Wow. The ball movement, the give and go. What a cut. What a pass. And then the two-pointer. Now Riverheads has a steal. They trail by seven with 50 seconds left to play. In the quarter, Tim Morris not happy again there as his team lost the ball. The sweater has come off. The sweater, no, and he's kicking the sweater now. Normally, coaches rip the jacket off, but Tim Morris was wearing a sweater. Hey, I like I, the feisting. The tie's too. coming Uh-oh. off next. The crowd is cheering him on. I don't think he's doing it to put on a show. I think it's purely on emotion, but you can tell the Riverheads fans like the display of emotion. Oh, I kind of like it, too. I do, too. It's the, the old cookie-cutter coach now that don't get that doesn't get emotional. I love the uh, you know the passion and that he he's showing. He didn't go overboard. He didn't do anything over the line. He didn't direct any of it at the players or the referees. He just kind of directed it all at himself. Riverhead's got another steal. Addison Mormon lost the ball. 
39-32. Riverhead's trailing by seven. Three-pointer on the way. In and out, no good. The Colonels cleared out the lane nicely Boy, there really when that did. shot went up. Alta Vista basketball. Taylor Kraft will fire and make it from the left wing. Three ball is good. Down to five seconds left to play in the third. The energy in the gym is real. Here comes a half-court shot from oh, Earhart that good. at the buzzer. It did look very good for a long time, but would not fall. Fun third quarter of ball here from Alta Vista High School. Lady Colonels lead by 10, 42-32. Who knows what will happen in the fourth quarter. Stop by and join us right after this on 105.5 KD Country. You're listening to Colonel Sports on 105.5 KD Country, WKDE, Alta Vista, Lynchburg. There's just one place where students are students first and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes in Virginia are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics, high school sports, a winning part of a complete education. Brought to you by English Construction Company, with offices in Lynchburg. Your high school sports station with award-winning coverage on 105.5 KD Country. I'm Kyle Haney. He is Oscar Briggs. If you're in the house right now, I guarantee you're having fun. Hopefully, you're having some fun at home. This is exciting stuff, I Mr. Think, Briggs. I think next year we need to talk to, to, to Athletic Director Hubbard and say, hey, we want these girls and guys playing on different nights. Yeah, we want to see some more of these games. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. I don't know where Coach uh, Coach Hubbard. He did, he did, he did used to coach, right. of course. But I don't know where Mr. Hubbard, the Athletic Director for Alta Vista, stands on that. But as we talked about last night, a lot of other states and even some other school districts, uh, athletic districts, pardon me, do play the games on different nights. Or they do girls, guys, varsity double headers at the same location. We'll work on it. I don't think we have any political pull, but we'll use what little we have. Riverheads basketball to start the fourth quarter. Burgess was able to knock a pass away, and Alta Vista would get to reset their defense with 7.38 left to play in the fourth. We talked about the good interior passing. That was probably overpassing. Crispin had a, a three-footer, tried to give it up for the one-footer, and just too many bodies. The spacing wasn't there for that play to work. Yeah, and you can fall in love with it. And obviously, Alta Vista is a good defensive team. If you go to it too much, they're going to start taking it away. Good recovery there by Riverheads to get the ball back. Earhart's going to fire the long two from 18 feet right wing. Nylon drains it. She's lead. got a good-looking little shot. Absolutely. Alta Vista lead back to eight. Oh, Burgess lost it at midcourt. There's another jump ball, mutual possession tie-up. Earhart, I think, just guessed right on which direction Burgess was going to go and sort of walked right into the dribble. Colonels to inbound on the near sideline. They're working right to left from Oscar and I's perspective this half. Burgess drives, gets to the free throw line, and gives it up to Mabry, who just calmly steps inside the three-point ring and drains an 18-footer herself. You talked about it last night. Sometimes an injury will uh, get the adrenaline flowing, and um, you, in doing that, you compensate, you kind of slow down, and everything becomes clear for you. She's playing really well right now. That stroke was smooth. I mean, that's not muscled or forced in any way. That's just a great shooting form there from Erica Mabry. Riverheads had to scramble to keep it back. Here comes the jump shot from Sarah Moore. That looked good, but it rattled in and out. Offensive board, turnaround stick back attempt from Castro. Hit the backboard and then the front iron wouldn't go. She was fouled, though, and she will go to the free throw line. We've got 6.37 remaining in the fourth. Alta Vista on top by 10 over Riverheads. It's VHSL 1A. Conference 44 action. Both of these teams will head on to East Region play next week. Looks like the Lady Colonels are going down to Matthews on Tuesday. I think they... Weather yeah, pending. Colonels are a number five seed. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Which would make Matthews the four seed. Those matchups are always fun. They are. Oh, that free throw. I'm not sure that drew iron. It didn't. The referees just didn't blow the whistle right away. Uh -oh. You must draw iron on the free throw or it is a violation. The yeah. air ball chant was going, and yeah. we talked about it at one of the boys' broadcasts that Minnesota, uh, one of the school districts, has yeah. banned that chant. Yeah. They're, they're really nice out there in Minnesota, so maybe they just want to keep with that. Just, you, you can be too nice, though. Let the, let the students' fans have some fun. Burgess between the circles. 
Wings it over to Erica Mabry. Mabry back to Burgess. Now it's left wing to Taylor Kraft. Good ball movement here. Mason stuck in the left mid post. She's got three Riverheads defenders draped around him, and guess what? It's a tie-up. They stop play for the jump ball. Possession arrow over to Riverheads. And Coach Spencer, for those of you that know her and know her well, did her a little, uh, what are you doing, dance? <laughs> she does have some dance moves, doesn't she? Coach Spencer in a very good mood before the game. I think she was working on putting the game face on, but when I interviewed her, very chipper, laughing and joking around, she gave me a hard time about she, being late. Very relaxed. Kraft stepping out to play some nice defense on Blake Bartley. Bartley was trying to drive the lane. Now it's back to Cassidy Chrisman. Chrisman with the turnaround or hook shot will not go. She was also fouled. That stops play with 546 left to play in the fourth quarter. She'll go to the line for two. She's one for two so far tonight from the line. Basketball fans, if you don't listen to KD Country for the music a whole lot, for one, you should, but two, you may not know about the KD Country radio auction. It's next Saturday, February 27th. It starts at 9 a.m. We get goods and services and gift certificates from local businesses. You bid and buy on them. It'll be a $20 gift certificate, and you can get it if you're the high bidder for far less than that. It's like buying money, our friend Les Woody used to say. That's a, that's a great that's a great quote from Les Woody, isn't it? It really is. You don't even have to go to the stock market and the currency exchange, all that stuff as that's going on. Deborah Spencer wants to take a timeout. Well, let's take it with her. Lady Colonels lead by nine. 5.33 left to play in the fourth quarter on 105.5 KD Country. Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service. A family serving families since 1905. Life is full of opportunities to show someone we love them. One such opportunity is the funeral or memorial service. Finch and Finch helps you celebrate the relationships they shared and honors the memory of your loved one. Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service. A family serving families since 1905. Now back to the action with Colonel Sports on 105.5 KD Country. 44-35, Alta Vista on top. But I'm not going to say in charge against the Riverheads Gladiators. Still plenty of time left in this ball game. Lady Colonels could get a score here and get the lead back to double digits. That would certainly make you feel a lot better if you're an Alta Vista yeah, fan. Yeah, to, to quote Jay Billis from last night, the Riverheads kind of just hanging around. And, again, this man-to-man -man defense has really created, uh, really stalled out the Colonels' offense. I wasn't even going to go there. I didn't want to mention... Your <sighs> beloved Tar Heels. Let's just leave it at that. Alta Vista basketball. Mason lost it at the top of the key. Got a right hand on it and sent it free for a moment. Emma Castro dribbling. Boy, Colonels did a great job in transition defense. Riverheads had numbers, had the secondary break, but they, uh, Goggins closed out on Bartley and was able to shut that down and force Riverheads into their offense. Great job on transition defense. Yeah, he sprinted back, took a good angle to the middle of the paint there to take away the hoop, and now it's Riverheads ball in a... Half-court offense set up. Free throw line to Castro. She'll fire. Oh, that jumper will not go. It was in and out. Kraft. That's the second time that she's tripped over that 10-foot line on the volleyball court for Bartlett. Yeah. In the exact same spot. You're right. Brittany Mason pops to the top of the circle, now catches and flips over to Burgess. Burgess tried to feather it in there to Paris Goggins. Got poked away. Goggins did control. Haley Kraft ran into the left post, then she... Hit the deck. No whistles and another jump ball. Mutual possession tie up. That's this a, time the arrow goes to Alta Vista. It's 13th. 4 with 17 remaining here in the ballgame. Colonel's up by 9, 44 35. There's no way anybody's ever kept a running record of that, right? Mm, we'll have to call Guinness and see. <laughs> call Guinness. Let's try the VHSL first. That's right. Burgess changes directions. Nice bounce pass to Mabry. Mabry knocks down a seven-footer from the left side of the paint. Boy, has Mabry missed tonight? I'm not sure she has. 46-35. We played four minutes of this fourth quarter. Four minutes of regulation left in this conference. 44 final. Riverheads basketball in the front court. They're working left to right from Oscar and I's perspective, going back towards Bedford Avenue at the gym here in Alta Vista. Good ball movement. Gets it down low to Emma Castro. She's fouled. Goggins thought she was straight up. Referee disagrees. And Castro will shoot two free throws with 3.45 left to play. Um, it's becoming. Colonel's up 46-35. This is a critical juncture for the Riverheads Gladiators. They've got to start converting. 
Free throw on the way and good from junior Emma Castro. 5'10", junior. Riverheads does have some size. A couple of kids in the uh, Colonel's pet band just shed their sweatshirts and threw them on the floor and stomped on them. <laughs> it was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> in reference clearly to Tim Morris earlier when he shed the sweater and proceeded to abuse it a little bit on the way down and kicked it some. We loved it. Obviously, the pep band guys and gals found it a little up bit in a 1-3-1 half-court press. Colonels break it. Nice transition and can't close out on the mismatch. Another. Gog the Goggins couldn't finish down low and another. Well, foul called. Hold on. One referee's called a foul. The other's called a jump ball. They're going to get together and say, what do you want to do? If they, call, if they call this a jump ball, then somebody's going to explode. <laughs> but they're going to call a foul. It's going to be on Kraft. Should be her second, I think, sixth one on Alta Vista as a team. Now there's 16. Pardon me, it's just her first. Beg your pardon. 16 foul on both teams now, so we will be shooting the rest of the way. 3.30 remaining. Colonels up by nine. Riverheads with an opportunity to close it to a six with a three. I don't think Deborah Spencer feels bad if her team goes to the free throw line. I think the Alta Vista contingent pretty confident in their free throw shooting abilities. Long three-pointer up and short from Macy Snyder. Snyder tried that one from Steph Curry range. 25 feet or possibly a bit more. Taylor Kraft, a more conventional three. Line drive won't go in. Paris Goggins with a nice offensive rebound. Good ball moving by the Lady Colonels. They'll ship it back to Victoria Burgess. Coach Spencer quickly has them spread out. It's man-to-man. -man. Burn a little clock, run the offense, feed it down to Goggins. She turns and misses. Burgess Victoria can't Burgess get it there. to she go second tonight. try. She has always around the basketball. Colonels probably feel like they should have got some points there with a couple looks inside of three feet. Riverhead's ball working left to right in the road. Red jerseys. They're not in a big hurry, but you can tell there's some urgency there with two and a half minutes left. Long jumper, too strong from Blake Bartley, left wing. Chrisman got stuck under the backboard. The shot actually hit the padding, but she was fouled again. Headed to the free throw line as the clock stops with 2.28 left to play in the fourth. Two for four on the night. It's a nine-point Alta Vista advantage, Oscar. Can't you sense a little bit of the urgency from oh, Riverhead? Absolutely. And if and if not, they should be. Sure. Chrisman, first one, hits the front iron, then the backboard, then does fall in. It's an eight-point Alta Vista lead now. Wonder if Riverheads will foul intentionally here kind of early. I've always thought that some teams waited too long I, when they were down eight I, I think that's a great point. I think that's the strategy that they're going to have to employ. The Colonels, you can't let the Colonels sit there and bleed clock off. That one goes down as well. It's now a seven-point advantage for Alta Vista. Looks like the zone defense from Riverheads. They're not fouling just yet anyway. It they, looks like Deborah Spencer wants her team to run off some clock. They went a 1-3-1 one, one half-court trap, Kyle, and that's yep. what they fell back into after the trap didn't work. Lady Colonels playing keep away. Taylor Kraft going to change that with a three-pointer. Too strong. Erica Mabry on a nice hustle rebound. Haley Kraft going to fire for three, and it's good. It goes down. I mean, I don't think Deborah Spencer was in love with the shot selection, but she was in love with the result. That's a dagger for, for Riverheads. They've got to score now on every possession. Under two minutes to play. And and they've got to do so lead quickly. By 10. Chrisman, good catch and shoot there on the left-hand post. Here's a timeout from Tim Morris. We're not done yet, even though the Lady Colonels lead by eight. Let's step aside as well. 143 left to play. Don't you go changing the dial. You've got it tuned to 105.5 KD Country. PCM Industrial Services recognizes the importance of high school athletics by sponsoring this award-winning broadcast. PCM Industrial Maintenance and Construction Specialists providing welding, millwright, erection, and fabrication services to all forms of industry throughout the Mid-Atlantic region. From offices in Alta Vista, PCM Industrial Services congratulates the Alta Vista basketball teams on another successful season. Good luck in the playoffs. Go Colonels. Your home for Colonel Sports Coverage, 105.5 KD Country. Alta Vista, 49, Riverheads, 41, but the Lady Gladiators, true to their mascot name, not going anywhere. They continue to fight. No, we've seen some ugly basketball games this year, too. Uh, this certainly hasn't been one of them. It's been fun to watch. It's been well played, a little bit scrappy. Uh, Riverheads had, has had every opportunity to fold. But they don't. They keep plugging along. They went that long stretch in the third quarter and didn't score. Uh, Colonels outscored them 13-9. to nine. Uh, 
they just they haven't gone away. They continue to battle, and, and you got to credit Coach Tim Morris for for leading these girls and, and showing them that type of leadership. And uh, it's they're obviously well coached, and he's instilled that competitive nature that hey, we're not going away. He's an emotional, intense guy. I think the girls feed off of that. He did that display with the sweater and the tie, and seemed like Riverhead started playing much better after that. There's a foul in the backcourt. Taylor Kraft was slapped on the arm by Blake Bartley. That will send Taylor Kraft to the free throw line for a one-on-one -one opportunity. Both teams are in the bonus right now. Second one on Bartley as a team. I don't know that that's a foul that they wanted to commit. They had the Colonels in trouble and really scrambling around in the backcourt. First one will not go for Taylor Kraft. and hung on the front edge of the rim for a moment there. Kraft tried to get it back. I think Coach Spencer wants them to get back and play defense. Here comes Earhart. Pull-up two-pointer will not go down from the right edge of the paint. Offensive board. They're going to call a foul Cassidy on Erica Christman Mabry. Who Mabry yep. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. That's uh, Getting excited here. Hey, you get excited. Just shout it out, man. It is on Mabry. It's the eighth team foul on the Alta Vista Lady Colonels. Third one on Mabry. Christman with a big quarter. She's going to the free throw line a bunch. Yeah, she's, she's three for four. She's got five points this quarter. Two opportunities here. Strokes the first one. Interesting. They called that on the floor. She makes it anyway, so she's going to get two free throws, but I thought maybe she was in the act of shooting. However, it doesn't really matter. 126 left to play. It's a seven-point Alta Vista lead. Now it's a six-point Alta Vista lead. Chrisman makes both. That's pretty huge for Riverheads. Two Full court pressure. Kraft looking for somewhere to go. Burgess has it. Left-hand dribble. Waist high. Nice bounce pass by her to get out of pressure. Looked like the intentional foul there. Yep. That's by Morgan Bond. She got Erica Mabry over here on the near sideline. Taylor Kraft going to go to the free throw line and shoot him? Wasn't it on Mabry? Is that a crafty play from Kraft? No, it was Kraft over here. Panned. Okay. All she, right. She got fouled before she threw the ball to Mabry. Okay. Whistle came out before. Drains the first. Second one on the way as Addison Mormon will head to the scores table and check in for Erica Mabry who's had a stellar ball game. Really has. Under not the best of circumstances with that ankle. 119 left to play in the fourth. Alta Vista up seven. Could be eight here. And they are up eight after Kraft sinks both. And you got to believe if you're if you're Tim Morris, you want your kids fouling somebody but one of the Kraft kids. Right. Yeah, you definitely prefer that. Riverheads basketball in the front court. Got to be in a bit of a hurry here. Ball faked by Bartley, and then she drives. Got to the free throw line. Haley Kraft with a nice defensive play to bottle her up and cause the mutual possession stoppage of play. The jump ball again. This time the arrow favoring Riverheads, but that change of possession could come in handy down the stretch here as we've got 69 seconds left to play. One -oh. Knocked out by Brittany Mason. Mason with the long wingspan, knocking it towards the front lobby. Riverheads will try it again on the inbound. Still trailing by eight. Gladiators will inbounds underneath the basket. Right side of their own hoop. There's one ball fake. They throw it in to Castro, who got free. Her 10-footer will not go. Mason got the rebound, but they got her on a foul. She got on the back of Blake Bartley. Bartley will now shoot a one-and-one. One. With one minute and one second left, Oscar. And that's not – you don't want to give the Gladiators the opportunity to score without with the clock not running. Right. Third one on Brittany Mason. Bartley sinks the first free throw. She's a 5'7 junior, and she's played well tonight. Kudos to Brittany for playing this whole half and just picking up that one foul. Mm -hmm. She picked up her second one about midway through the second, second quarter. quarter yep. Bartley gets the ball back from the official, ready to set up for the second free throw. Deep knee bend, right-hand shooter, fires it to the front of the rim, and it goes down. Good stroke. Back to a six-point advantage for Alta Vista. Burgess pops free to catch the pass. Alta Vista working against full court pressure. That foul is on Blake Bartley as the whistle comes out. On the far sideline, she just put the body into Taylor Kraft. It may have been intentional. It was because she's just given instructions to uh, Earhart that she needs to foul Victoria Burgess so that she doesn't have to foul Kraft. Well, that's pretty smart. I mean, I think there's a lot of high school guys that may not understand that, may not recognize who the better free throw shooters are. Kraft sinks the first. Granted, Burgess is two for two from the free throw line tonight, but if you've scouted a team, maybe you've got some numbers and some people that you have identified. See what Kraft does on the second one. On the court right now for the Lady Colonels, Taylor Kraft, Addison Mormon, 
Brittany Mason, Haley Kraft, and Victoria Burgess. Taylor Kraft does make it. She's made the last four from the free throw line. No two-pointers for Taylor Kraft. All threes and free throws. Doesn't like even numbers, maybe. Riverheads, one hand pass to the right wing. Colonel's That's Sarah Moore. She got Colonel's, tied up. Yeah, excuse me. Colonel's really closing out, making them burn clock. Mm. But that doesn't matter. Morgan Bond sinks the three-pointer off balance three. Timeout on the court. It's a 30-second timeout. Let's keep it right here, and we can try and recap this one. It's been back and forth pretty much all night. Lady Colonel's led 29-23 at halftime, Oscar. Looked like they were going to pull away. I think they got up 12 at one point, but Riverheads just kept fighting. Yeah, they are closed it down to five now, and uh, they continue to battle. That was a nice three. That kept them in the game. 41 seconds left. They've done a good job. Colonels also, if, if it weren't for the free throws, Colonels would be in a real battle, uh, although this is a battle. But yeah. uh, certainly the Colonels have been great in fourth quarter tonight. The Alta Vista guys team has had some free throw woes at various points of the year. They've had some, speaking of the guys again, had some games where they've been really good from the charity stripe Oscar. And then some other games in a couple of their losses this year, missed free throws have really burned them. They've been improving on it all year. And as Coach Harris has always said, I mean, we work on it every day in practice. It's never going away. I mean, we're going to keep shooting. And Burgess is fouled. She had to work to get free to catch the inbounds pass. And now, speaking of free throws, she will head there and shoot a one-and-one. One. I'm not going to do shoot a yeah, two. Yeah, Colonels are 11 of 12 in the second half of free throw shooting tonight. Hey, like we said, man, it's not a jinx. It's just reporting the facts. It is a two-shot foul, though. That's the 10th team foul in Riverheads. The next one on the Colonels will be two. Victoria Burgess misses the first. Burgess, a left-handed shooter. Interesting, very interesting to me that she shoots left-handed Oscar because I do know for a fact that in softball she's a right-handed hitter and a right-handed thrower. Second one goes down, no problem, though. Clearly a very practiced left-handed shooting stroke. 40 seconds left to play in the ball game. Riverheads starting to get into desperation time. They trail six. They're in the front court looking for somewhere to go. Sarah Moore dribbles through the Alta Vista defense. Oh, the lay-in won't fall from the right side. Got her own rebound. Stuck back up. That will go. Tim Morris wants another timeout. This time it's a full one-minute timeout. Let's take 30 seconds of it. Alta Vista on top, trying to hold on. They lead by four with just 22 seconds remaining on 105.5 KD Country. Brother needs a thicker, sister wants a ride. Uncle needs a sports car to keep him satisfied. Mama, she wants comfort, luxury and style. And daddy, he just wants a deal that's gonna make him smile. Everybody's happy, you can hear them all say. We went to Fellers, Fellers Chevrolet. Competition for all dealers in Central VA. A short drive will save you money. Fellers Chevrolet. In Alta Vista. Your station for high school sports play-by-play is 105.5 KD Country. Coach Deborah, Coach Deborah Spencer in the timeout huddle, urging her team on with assistant coaches Ed Frazier and Susan Short. Colonels will send out Burgess, Mabry, Taylor, and Haley Craft, and Brittany Mace. This is the free throw shooting team is what this is. Sure. Lady Colonels are going to face full court pressure. They'll stack up four wide along the free throw line. Got to go the full 90 feet. They inbound it to Haley Craft. Riverhead's trying to find her to foul. Now they finally do. It's Blake Bartley that committed it. Bartley didn't didn't think she committed it. I think she wanted to play defense. Yeah, it's a, it, it worked out well. but yeah. Haley Craft. Going to take the walk over to the free throw line. Lady Colonels have been very, very good there this entire game. We've got 19 seconds left to play. Alta Vista trying to hold on with a four-point lead. Kraft smooths that one into the hole, and now it's a five-point lead. Kraft sisters have seven field goals. Hmm. How many of them are threes? Seven. <laughs> Oscar gave me that look like he was setting me up. He wanted me to ask. Kraft makes both. Good job by Haley Kraft to extend the lead back to six. Now it's going to take two threes to be beaten. There's one Sarah of Sarah Moore fires one. Oh, it looked good. It was just it too strong. Good. Burgess grabs the rebound on the left side of the hoop, and then she is fouled immediately. Down to 12.3 seconds. And that might be it. Yeah, I feel like if Burgess can make one here and get it to a seven-point lead. Make it a three-possession game, yeah. Kyle. We'll see what happens, though. It's never over. 
until it's over and that final horn sounds and even then sometimes you're like is it really over did we did we win can I can I open my eyes that's, now that's Bartley's fifth and Tim Morris has taken his fully entitled one minute to make the replacement yeah it's interesting that's an interesting rule in basketball uh, look at too, him. isn't it look well, at him he's uh He's taken this opportunity to, to have some dialogue with the officials and, and, and express his displeasure as to what's going on tonight. That's, a, that's an interesting facet of basketball, that when somebody fouls out, the coach is entitled to a full 60 seconds to think about a replacement. But any other time, you just sub people in on the fly. Right. I mean, just in right. the blink of an eye, you send somebody in there. But, but apparently, Dr. Naismith thought when somebody fouled out, you need extra time to think about that. Burgess will fire the first free throw off the mark to the left. Lady Colonels lead 56 to 50. Burgess with the second try here. It's a double bonus, two shot foul as Riverheads has committed over 10. She does knock down the second one, so that's huge. Seven point lead for Alta Vista. Riverhead's got to be in a big hurry. Macy Snyder gets it in, throws a long pass. They've got Chrisman free on the low post, and she scores for two. There's another timeout. Let's keep it right here, Mr. Briggs. We'll talk about the auction and the guys game tomorrow after we talk about this last second situation here for Riverhead. 6.2 left. They trail by five. I guess at best you're hoping for a steal. You fire up a quick three, then you're trying for another steal. I mean, that's that's all you have at this point if you're Riverhead. There's, there's a pick play that you can run since you can run the baseline. There's a pick play where... You can possibly draw a charge with no yeah. time going off the clock. That's true. Um, you don't see that utilized very often anymore. It used to be a, a play that was used a lot back in the 70s and 80s. You don't see that as part of the strategy uh, much anymore. Well, and I think you're right. It's one of those such a subtle plays that doesn't come up that often that coaches have kind of said, hey, we need to work on the fundamentals, shooting free throws, layups, boxing out, that some of those trick kind of plays like that have fallen out of favor a little bit. That being said, maybe at the end of the year is a time you could insert something well, like that. It's, it's, it's almost like time management in football. Yeah. It's gotten to be awful that college teams, foot pro teams. Kraft does get it into Burgess. Burgess immediately triple teamed and fouled. Lady Colonel's got a little bit of time run off the clock. 4.6 seconds left. Burgess will shoot two again. She was fouled on the near sideline in front of the Riverheads bench by number 30, Morgan Bond. Her third. Burgess waiting for the ball from the official. Decent sized crowd in here tonight, Oscar. Of course, nothing like the double header we had last night. Two games seems to get people off the couch a little bit more than one. Well, you know, that may be a selling point. You flash those kind of dollar signs in front of Dean Hubbard, and he might bite on that. I, th I think you're right. Not that he's all about the money, but, you know, hey, got to fund these programs. There is a bottom line. Burgess misses a second. Down to one second left. Here comes a desperation three from Snyder. It's no good. Big applause from the crowd, and the celebration is on. Alta Vista wins 58-52 Subway postgame show when we come back to 105.5 KD Country. Recognized for outstanding service and customer satisfaction, Sunny Merriman Incorporated is Virginia's platinum service Thomas Built Bus Dealer. As Virginia's oldest and most experienced bus distributor, Sunny Merriman Incorporated has been providing buses to schools, churches, medical facilities, and transit agencies for 50 years. Sunny Merriman Incorporated recognized the Alta Vista boys and girls basketball teams for their outstanding season and wishes them good luck in the playoffs. Go Colonels! Jumpstart your business on a winning note with the Alta Vista Revolving Loan, an opportunity to score big for your company's future growth. Funds available up to $10,000. Loan rate 1% below prime. Check in with Alta Vista's Economic Development Director, Dennis Jarvis, at Alta Vista Town Hall. The Alta Vista Revolving Loan Fund encourages economic development and enhances community vitality, supporting the Alta Vista Colonel's winning tradition. More live high school sports action on 105.5 KD Country. Subway postgame show arrives. It finds the Colonels a winner, 58-52, to 52, a six-point victory over a scrappy Riverhead squad that would just never go away, Oscar. This was a really fun night for us, one of the better ball games we've seen all year in a game that honestly had a little bit of everything. With Colonels led by six at the half, and that's what it ended up being, uh, oh, six-point. Yeah. Now we're going through some of the festivities um, as we do that. Um, 
talk, I think we'll acknowledge, uh, I don't know if they acknowledge the all-conference players at this time or not. Yeah. It, no, they'll give the hardware to Alta Vista for the trophy. The champions, Title Town USA. Listen to the applause. You can hear that on your radio at home or in your car. Don't think that these conference titles are just a throwaway and don't mean anything. The crowd got into it. The gang got into it. Coaches are into it. Fans on their feet standing and cheering. This Lady Colonel basketball squad. Great stuff, Oscar. Great scene here from Alta Vista High School. I think some people get the impression, and I asked Coach Spencer about it, the seating is already set for regionals. This game doesn't really determine anything. So I think sometimes people might think, oh, well, it's just going to be a glorified scrimmage. We'll run around out there and play a ball game. No, you can tell Lady Colonels wanted this one. You absolutely could. And uh, let's give it to Riverhead. Yeah. Very well coached, uh, very disciplined, scrappy, had every, you know, had every reason to fold and go quietly into the night when the Colonels got up by 12 and those back-to-back three-pointers from Mabry and Kraft. And it looked like uh, the Colonels were going to run away and hide, but there was no quitting those gladiators. They came back and, and cut it to, I think, cut it to four at one point. Uh, just weren't, just not enough, ran out of time. Well said. Let's step aside on the Subway Post Game Show. Oh, yeah, I told you I was going to update you on our sound engineer. Went with the classy tur- turkey six-inch. Always hits the spot, she says. She does seem to, that's kind of her go-to, that, that six-inch turkey sub, and it is fabulous. I mean, Subway's been doing that for years, and appreciate all the people on Main Street tuning in and everybody everywhere else tuning in. Subway Post Game Show continues with some stats. Some players of the game, and then we'll ride off into the sunset. Oh, yeah, we'll tell you a little bit about the boys' game tomorrow. Alta Vista, a winner here in this one, 58-52, Conference 44 champs. You heard every second of the action live on 105.5 KD Country. Colonels, Colonels, hey, let's go, Lady Colonels. Cheering on the Alta Vista Lady Colonels one-stop mark. Main Street Alta Vista are proud of your dedication and teamwork. It's led you to the basketball playoffs. One Stop Mart Altivist is proud to support the community that supports One Stop. Before stepping out to tonight's game, be sure to fill up the gas tank at One Stop and pick up a bucket of the best chicken in town. One Stop Mart Main Street Altavista, where the gas is cheap, beverages are cold, and the chicken's kicking. Quality, performance, value. When it comes to tires, no one is as obsessive as the designers and engineers at Michelin. We all expect tires to perform at their very best. So whether it's smooth riding Michelin cross country terrain SUV tires, rugged Michelin LTX series of truck tires, or the premier passenger car performance of Michelin Hydro Edge tires, the name Michelin means you'll get the most out of your vehicle. When it's time to switch to Michelin, come to Perkins Twin Tire and Auto Service, Main Street Altavis. Back to the press box for high school sports on 105.5 KD Country. Lady Colonels, champions here in this one, Conference 44 title. They advance on to region play. As Oscar and I pointed out in the commercial break, Riverheads, pardon me, all choked up just thinking about it. Riverheads advancing on as well. They'll be in regional. So this is a matchup we could see again. Wouldn't shock me one bit if we did. And, and remember, at winning a conference championship, you start off 0-8. Yeah. Um, what are the odds? Let's call Vegas. Let's call Vegas. What are the odds on all the jump balls we had? Uh, no, you're right. I mean, this is a Colonel team that did struggle at the beginning of the year. They had some injuries. They had a bit of a late start because of volleyball. And sometimes it just takes a little while to get the ball rolling, but they certainly did. In 2016, Lady Colonels haven't lost very much. Now they've won 11 out of their last 12. It's pretty good. Basketball coaches always talking about peaking at the right time, being a postseason type of team. Sounds like Deborah Spencer's got her squad set up for that. Well, they started uh, with a tough schedule as well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that can uh, be a double-edged sword. Uh, certainly you play tougher competition and uh, you, you should get better uh, with a good coach and you will get better. Uh, on, the, on the reverse side of that is uh, it can be extremely demoralizing to a team but to start off 0-8. Uh, but Coach Spencer kept, uh, kept truer coaching status and just steady 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 uh continue to coach no matter what the circumstances were and lo and behold here we go conference champions and don't and don't forget we probably don't talk about it quite enough but 
Coach Spencer, one of the best around. I mean, she has got the state championship in volleyball and one in basketball for a reason, folks. She has won a ton of ball games. It's not about her. She really doesn't have an ego. She makes it about the kids. She's emotional and feisty, too, but it's a, a, a very well-run program. And don't forget her assistant coaches, Ed Frazier and Susan Short. That's right. That staff has been intact for quite some time now, too, and that always helps. When you can keep the assistant coaches around, everybody's on the same page, it's a really a good winning tradition here at Alta Vista. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, – you can piggyback on no, that or yeah, you can get I right into the No, I think you're absolutely right. Coach, Coach Susan Short is the head coach of the JV team. And uh, anytime you're able to do that and, and have the, the camaraderie, she does the same thing with volleyball, mm -hmm. uh, you've got that feeder program. And, and if you're running your program right, then the JV coach is an extension of the varsity coach. And, you you know, you run the same program. You run the offense. You run the defense. And you get those kids acclimated to the system. Uh, that pays off, and it's been a – winning formula here at Alta Vista for a long, long time. Sure has. Guy's side has done that successfully, too. You look at the football team, that coaching staff has been together for a long time. Heck, most of those guys were coaching together when Coach Mike Sharnas was at Rustburg. And let's talk about the youth programs that feed the, here as well. And the YMCA basketball program has is, is been a great feeder uh, into this program for a long time, just like the Lizards uh, football program has been uh, for the football program for the last – uh, 10 years or so so um, great youth sports here in Alta Vista and it pays off by uh, transitioning to the high school these kids know what they're doing when they get here mm -hmm. it's a basketball town and that's not just for the guys that's for the gals too let's get those post game statistics here Oscar as the subway post game show just trucks on it's like subway they just keep getting better and better let's start with the Riverheads Gladiators two for Sarah Moore Abahart with five Castro with ten Bartley with eight, Morgan Bond with 13, and Cassidy Crispin with nine points in the fourth quarter ended up with 14 on the game. For the Colonels, Whitney Davis with two, Haley Kraft with 14, Taylor Kraft with 13, Victoria Burgess with five, Paris Goggins with five, Erica Mabry with 14, Brittany Mason with five. 58 points for the Colonels, 58-52 winners tonight here against the Riverheads Gladiators. A nice balanced scoring again. Let's mention those Kraft sisters again. They are so good. Haley and Taylor Kraft, am I correct in what we talked about earlier? Did that hold true? No no two-pointers for right. either of them. That's Only right. three-pointers and, and free, free throws. throws. Yep. I'm telling I'm going to ask them. You guys dislike even numbers or something like that? You don't like the number two? <laughs> Obviously not. So, <laughs> Well, Taylor Kraft must like the number two. She's 22. She's got a couple of them in the jersey, and Haley Haley's Kraft 21. is 21. I think Haley's going to spin that as two plus one adds up to three. <laughs> uh, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe Maybe got, the thought process doesn't get that deep. Yeah, we got player of the game, too. We do. Radio Shack player of the game. Brought to you by Radio Shack on Main Street in Alta Vista, your authorized Intellos dealer. I'll go first, as usual, for the Riverheads Gladi Gladiators. Easy for me to say. Can you can you pick the coach? Sure. We don't have any rules. We write. We no, make the rules. You can pick the coach. I, I know it's the player of the game, but gosh, you got to love what Coach Tim Morris is doing down there. He worked the referees. He took it right to the edge but didn't go over the edge. He had the animated outburst where he ripped off the sweater. I love it. I think he does a great job with this bunch. Boy, I, I think the crew, the officiating crew, was pretty tolerant. Uh, there are some crews that would have teed him up immediately uh, with some of his, I'm going to call them shenanigans because I like the word shenanigans. But, sure. It's a good uh, word. Yeah, I think uh, he took it to the edge. It certainly was entertaining. Uh, but, you know, let's get down to the root of why he's doing it, and that's that he has a passion for his kids, he has a passion for the game, and he wants to defend his kids and make sure they're getting a fair shake. That's so, right. Uh, you can't fault a coach for that. Nope. Uh, well, that's my pick. Go I, pick a player, though. I, Don't double up I'm on not, that. I'm I'm not, weird. I'm not. I'm, I'm going uh, with Morgan Bond. She was consistent all night long, six points in the first half, seven in the second half, and uh, was, was, was solid out there for Riverheads. All right, for the Alta Vista Lady Colonels, they got the win tonight. I thought about it a bit, and there's definitely some places you could go. Kraft, Haley Kraft with 14. I can't just say Kraft. There's two of them on the team. Haley Kraft with 14. Taylor with 13. Erica Mabry with 14. Going to go in a different direction, though. Right. Oh, you know where I'm going. I got to go with Victoria Burgess. I love it. She's the quarterback out there, a true point guard. She assisted on quite a few of those buckets that those three people had. 
great defense, knocked down some free throws there down the stretch as well. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to concur, but I, that's a great pick. That's the, that's the direction I was going. Okay, now you're going to But I did, I did have an, another pick, uh, and, and this probably won't surprise you, but uh, playing injured tonight, I don't think she missed a shot from the floor. Um, perfect from the floor tonight, as far as we can remember. Uh, Erica Mabry played uh, great tonight and had some, some, some big buckets uh, when the Colonels were fending off that radi the radiators. That's a new it's a name. pretty cool River, name, yeah. yeah. The Riverheads Gladiators come back. And, uh, you know, it's obviously she doesn't have her full mobility yet, but that didn't stop her. She found her spots, was able to spot up, found her weak spots in the zone. Uh, Erica Mabry had a great game tonight. She's my Radio Shack player of the game. I, I really like that pick by you. I, I may confirm with her dad, but I'm with you. I'm, I'm not sure she missed. I'm not sure she missed from the field. Great stuff, Victoria Burgess and the rest of the gang signaling up here. How nice is it, too, when you have three outside shooters that are that good? I mean, that's just that's just tough to get that scouting report, you know, and, and say, okay, they've got these two sisters that really shoot the three ball good. and uh, Oh, and then you got to watch out for this other person, and your shoulders kind of slump, and you go, wait, there's somebody else, too? Gosh. And, you know, all of them are streaky shooters. Um, it'd be interesting to know that we don't have access to the data. We could get it if we wanted it, mm -hmm. I'm sure. But uh, what percentage are shooting from three-point land? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it's in the upper 30s. I would think so. I mean, a good three-point shooter is going to be around there, maybe dipping into the 40% mark. But like you said, streaky. I mean, nobody's 50-50 nobody's out there from three-point land, not even, uh, not, even, not even the pro guys. All right, you know who's always better than 50-50, 100% all the time? Our starting lineup. Also, our sound engineer, Eleanor Haney. She really recommends the turkey sub from Subway. She also loves the coffee, which is for closers only. Inside joke. Our 2016 girls playoff sponsors. We couldn't do it without these folks. The one-stop mart where the gas is cheap, the beverages are cold, the chicken, it's chicken. always kicking. Right on cue, OB. <laughs> Perkins Twin Tire. They're at 1312 Main Street in Alta Vista or online at Perkins Twin Tire. Dot com. And just as a brief aside, not just tires over there at Perkins. They can handle any major or minor repair work. English Construction, wishing our high school athletes an exciting and injury-free game. The Alta Vista Office of Economic Development, helping Alta Vista grow. Sonny Merriman, Virginia's premier bus company. Feller Chevrolet, a short drive will save you money. PCM Industrial Services, serving the Mid-Atlantic region with quality, maintenance, and construction service. English is your complete home center, your Pratt and Lambert paint dealer. Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service, a family serving families since 1905. Online broadcast, if you listened at kdcountry.com or with the TuneIn app, it's brought to you by Chad Rakos, your all-state agent in Winhurst. This is the Subway Post Game Show. All classic Subway subs, just $6 for the month of February. That's all your favorites. Oscar? You won't be here tomorrow night, but I will. Subway pregame show starts at 645. It's the Alta Vista Colonels hosting LeRae in a Conference 44 championship game. Hope you'll, hope you'll make your plans to stop by and join us on 105.5 KD Country.